Hey Forge Masters, today I'm excited to talk to you about melodic doom death metal band Hanging Garden in their latest release Skeleton Lake, which is a melancholic journey across a frozen lake in a small weary vessel. How does this album stack up compared to other records in the genre from this year? Stick around to find out about that, but more interestingly, I'm going to talk a bit about Hanging Garden's PR strategy since their 2013 signing with Life Force Records. So let's get into that right now. The internet age has completely flipped the music industry on its head in so many ways. I first heard Hanging Garden around 2007 or 8 with their debut album Inherit the Eden. It is a fantastic record and it really took the melodic doom death scene by storm. Their follow up album, however, didn't really garner as much success. For reasons I can only speculate, the band took a five year hiatus from releasing music. Now, look, folks, having your debut album get a ton of success in the music industry is is one, super, super rare, and two, because of its super rareness, it's very, very difficult to devise a strategy to appropriately follow up on that initial success. So I look at bands like Rapture, for example, that came into the scene, they burned super hot, released their three albums, and then they were gone. If you want a music career to be a marathon and not a sprint, you have to adjust accordingly here. Since 2013, the band has followed a consistent release pattern. And with this consistent release, they also put out music videos. They have a very active social media account. This is part of their marketing strategy. Their partnership with Life Force Records, I'm sure, has played a part in that. So you'll see these guys and gal and doing interviews, participating in their active social media accounts, putting out music videos. There's just a plethora of content out there for Hanging Garden fans, new and old alike, to just dive right in. And this seems to have really worked because they caught my attention last year with their EP, Against the Dying of the Light, and Welkin of Flame was one of my favorite songs of the entirety of last year, really. It's just a good example to show if you can keep your name fresh and on people's lips, despite being in a sea of thousands of other bands, people will pay attention to you. Okay, so now that we've talked a bit about Hanging Garden's PR strategy, let's go into Skeleton Lake itself. I wanted to do our approach to album reviews a little bit differently today. So what I'm gonna do is highlight particular songs and talk about what works for those particular songs. And I'm also gonna talk about our criteria of atmosphere and vibe, production, composition, and artwork and themes while discussing those songs. So our first song to study today is Winter's Kiss. Winter's Kiss is a very notable track on this record and you'll see why in just a second. In an interview with No Clean Singing, Hanging Garden singer Tony Hitaka said that the band's songs have become much more precise and focused and Winter's Kiss is a perfect example of that. Take a listen to this catchy as hell chorus from that track. The winter took everything Isn't that a total earworm? Those vocal melodies are just absolutely infectious. This video was released back in March on the Life Force Records YouTube page, and it got a bunch of people pumped up for the upcoming release. And I can see why. It is easily one of the best songs on the record. As you can hear, the production on this is very well done. Despite the band members being scattered geographically, they are able to record and write music from the comfort of their own home. You can always have your material mixed and mastered somewhere else. It's really just most important for you as a musician to get the best takes available, whether it's in a home studio or in a studio that you feel comfortable in. Okay, so now that we've highlighted the fantastic production on this record, let's move on to our next track that I really love, Field of Reeds.
This is one of my favorite tracks from Skeleton Lakes. Unfortunately, there is no music video for this one, but I thought it was so good it deserved its own little case study. In 2019, Hanging Garden introduced female vocalist Rika Hataka. Her prominent role on this record in particular has taken Hanging Garden to new heights, as she can both growl and sing. While adding a dramatic gothic flair to this record, the band has really been able to t enhance the mood by adding the beautiful feminine vocals of Rika. Tony, he also has very dynamic vocals with the ability to perform guttural growls and somber clean singing. Having Rika in the mix really fully rounds out their vocal characteristics and totally blows the roof off of their previous capabilities. Check out this amazing chorus on Fields of Reeds. I love the staccato nature of those lines and how they just kind of punch through the music there. It's really beautifully done too and adds a whole new level of saturation having the keyboards and the vocals doing the same note. It's just so cool. Brilliant stuff on this record as we can see. Let's move on to our final track, the title track, Skeleton Lake. Skeleton Lake comes at the very end of this album. Kind of surprising, but it's it's a very cool way to kind of bring resolution to the listener. This track is actually follows more uh, the traditional doom death characteristics as it's about seven and a half minutes, you know, very introspective, whereas the rest of the album follows a bit more of a pop characteristics, which I'll get into in a second. Look, I'd be remiss if we didn't quickly talk about the album cover for Skeleton Lake itself. Look at these colors, they are brilliant. You can almost pick out faces in the clouds. It's just very simple and concise. It exactly matches what Hanging Garden is doing right now, delivering simple, melancholic, and straightforward music that is eye-catching, as we can see here, and heart-wrenching, as we can also see here. They pull it off beautifully with their artwork, with their limited edition vinyls, their fantastic looking merchandise. And speaking of visuals, let's take a look at the Skeleton Lake official music video. Look, you're gonna hear me say this a lot. The Finns, they know how to take an already introspective and somber subgenre and make it even more intense. This is no exception for Hanging Garden. Skeleton Lake is a fantastic melodic death doom album, but it's got massive undertones of gothic metal and dare I say even some retro wave or pop in there. You're not going to hear pop in the way of electronic drums or arpeggiated synth lines on this record, but the album follows that retro wave formula. Simple song structures that are sad as fuck and still engaging. They keep you focused and attentive while making you feel regret for not saying thank you to the barista yesterday for giving you that coffee. You should always be saying thank you to your baristas. <laughs> now, I really love this record. It is focused, it is somber, it fits wonderfully in with my collection of Sad Boy Records. The band has really elevated their sound and their talents with the addition of Rika, a diverse and talented singer. I am very eager to see where Hanging Garden goes from here. This is one of my favorites of the month, if not the year. This record gets 4.8 out of five emotional memories. Be sure to support Hanging Garden by finding their material wherever Life Force records are sold. They have a great Bandcamp page that you need to check out. They have plenty of merchandise. This is a melodic doom death band that you have to get on top of if you have not already. Thanks for sticking around, Forge Mates. Your likes, shares, and comments are much appreciated. Go with the gods, and until we see each other again, stay humble and introspective. Take care.